Let's go over how to manage PowerShell repositories in PowerShell. First, I want to mention that any changes that you make to PowerShell repositories will only be made for the current user. If another user needs a repository, it will need to be registered under that user as well. Okay, let's take a look at our currently registered repositories by running get ps repository. You can see here that we have the PowerShell gallery, which has been registered by default. Now, if I pipe that to select star, you can see all the properties associated with that repository. Now I want to register an internal repository that I've created on my ProGet server. So let me switch over to ProGet. Here I have my API endpoint URL. This is what I'm going to need to register this repository. Now, if I go back to PowerShell, I am putting the values for the parameters I need into a hash table so I can splat them to register PS repository. For name, I'm going to use PS repo. And for source location, I'm going to use the URL that I got from ProGet. For publish location, I'm going to use the same URL, but I added slash API slash v2 slash package to the end of it. This is required by ProGet for publishing modules. And finally, for installation policy, I'm going to set this to trusted since it is an internal repository that I control. Now let's splat those parameters to register PS repository. When I run get PS repository again, I now have my new PS repo in addition to the PowerShell gallery. Now, if you don't have access to an internal ProGet server or NuGet feed, you can also register a file share as a PowerShell repository. I have a file share set up on server one called file share repo, and I'm going to create a new hash table and for the name, I'm going to call it file share repo. For both the source and publish locations, I'm going to put the path to the file share. And for installation policy again, I'm going to put trusted. Let's go ahead and run that to register the file share. Now let's run get ps repository again. You can see both the ProGet repository and the file share repository listed. Now if I run find module against the file share repository, it will return the test module that is published there. Next, let's go over how to use set ps repository. We can use this command to change properties to repositories that have already been registered. For example, if I run get ps repository, you can see that the PowerShell gallery has an installation policy of untrusted. Let's say I want to change that to trusted. I would then run set ps repository dash name ps gallery dash installation policy trusted. Then when I run get ps repository again, the ps gallery is now trusted. This will work for the other properties as well. Finally, you can use the unregister ps repository command to remove a repository. Let's say you want to remove the ps gallery repository so that PowerShell will only look in your local repositories for modules. To do that, you can run get ps repository dash name ps gallery and pipe it to unregister ps repository. Now when we run get ps repository, the ps gallery is no longer there. If you decide that you want to add the PS Gallery back, it is as easy as running register PS Repository dash default. Now the PS Gallery is back. Again, any changes that you make to PowerShell repositories will need to be done on a user by user basis. These changes are not global. And that was how to manage PowerShell repositories in PowerShell.